Well, if you're watching this video, that means you probably purchased one of my TBM 900 switch panel kits and are looking for some instruction on how to assemble it. So this video is the first part of the build process, which covers the unpacking, the building of the case, the assembling of the face panel itself, and some basic introduction into the wiring. There will be a second video soon that goes into more detail on the wiring of the entire system. Please note that this video was originally recorded as a live Twitch stream, and as such, there may be some points that I kind of jump around and where the video and audio uh, may not seem to follow along as it probably should. So with that, let's get on with there building is some, the panel. Uh, construction, um, construction skills that are probably necessary. The kit comes with a wooden box and uh, I'll kind of show you that in a second. And so you have to uh, be able to put some glue and nails together to build the box. And then the panel itself, there is a lot of wiring and a lot of soldering. So you're going to need some electronic skills. So I would recommend a nut driver that we'll see here. It's a 5 16th inch nut driver. This is uh, to screw all of the switches down and tighten them up. You're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver. After doing a few of these and trying to strip wires just using a pair of cutters and my fingers to hold the wire and getting nice calluses and blisters there, I bought myself a nice pair of clippers. And if you've not seen these, these are the kind that you just stick the wire in there and you do that and it strips the wire for you. So we're going to try those out. A couple pair of wire cutters. If you're an old man like me, you probably want one of these guys. The old uh, dentist uh, headset there with the light and the uh, magnifiers on it. That's kind of the tool kits you're going to need. You probably also need uh, a hammer, some nails, some glue for the wooden box, and some paint to paint that. Okay, so we talked about tools. So we're going to put those off to the side for now here. And let's take a look at the kit. Okay, so yeah, so the wooden case comes in uh, six parts. You've got a back. And I've uh, pre-cut some holes there, so the little nails, if any of you guys have built IKEA stuff, I'll probably send some nails. Personally, when I build them here, I have a, a nail gun, an air-powered uh, air nail gun. And so what I typically do is um, I glue them and nail them. So we've got the, uh, the back piece, we've got the bottom piece, which is actually um, cut at an angle because this when it's all said and done it uh, the panel sits back at about a 60 degree angle And so you basically just you glue them together you line up the pieces you glue the back on and you nail it in there and Then you'll have the front the top piece that also is uh, beveled as well. So that will get glued and nailed on the top and Then there's the two side pieces that just get glued and nailed on either side so even though you do need to do some uh, gluing and nailing, this is what a fully finished box will look like. You know, I've uh, nailed this one together, I've sanded it down, I haven't painted it yet. Um, the last piece that goes on is this face plate here. There's a, there's a little spacer that goes on the front. And this is simply to give the face uh, plate a little bit more bite when you put the screws in it. My early versions of it, I just tried to put the screws right into this face of this and there just wasn't enough bite there. So I've added this little extra piece on there. So when you're done building the case, that's, uh, that's kind of what it's going to look like. Now, the cases that I sell as part of the fully built kit, I actually sand them and then I, I sand them, I fill in the nail holes with uh, uh, wood putty. And then I paint them. I found myself a nice uh, silver metallic paint at Home Depot that makes these things look almost like they're metal instead. So that's what you'll end up with. You can choose to either do that ahead of time or you can choose to do that after the fact, but you will need the, well, you probably will want the case in order to mount the panel uh, when it's all said and done. At some point, I may have an upgrade option to do this in metal instead of, uh, instead of wood. Let's take a look at the, at the face plate. So this is what the face plate looks like. I'll get a little bit closer here for you guys. It's actually a white piece of plexiglass that has been painted a couple, it's actually got four coats of paint on it in two different colors. Um, the end result is, is a very nice looking uh, face plate that uh, the white colors stand out pretty nicely and it's nice and crisp and clear, easy to read if I uh, 
you know, I don't know if this thing will focus if I go right up here. You know, I went through and I built the complete upper panel. I put all the icing switches in. I put the three ECS switches in. I put the master caution and master warning switch in. I've got a potentiometer here for panel dimming, which actually dims the panel. Cut an extra hole and cut and uh, labeled it up for brakes, so we'll actually have a brake pedal to, or the brake knob as well, so that you can set the brakes. Pretty happy with the way it come it, it came out, so it's a uh, it's a nice way of doing it. Just some of the other parts. This thing is driven by an Arduino board, so I part of the kit comes with an Arduino Mega Twenty Five Sixty. I've designed it to work around uh, Ardsim X. Um, part of the build process is, is that you actually have to install that yourself. You know they come with uh, a bunch of pin uh, slots, pin headers, but you don't have any way to solder anything, right? So I wanted to have something that was clean, um, both only from a, from a connectivity and soldering standpoint, but also if something goes wrong with this Arduino board, uh, make it easy to replace. So in essence, this Arduino board is what powers everything, but it's kind of the last thing you put together. We use the shield board to do all the wiring too. So what we'll end up doing a little bit later is we'll come through and we'll wire up all of these pins and that will attach then the wires themselves will attach to the back side of the uh, of the panel and then when they're all said and done the Arduino just kind of plugs in there like that and we're off and running. Um, I also send a nice box of, uh, of wire here that is, should be just enough if you're careful to do all of the wiring. Um, I tend to use way too much wire and I still have enough out of this box um, but it does come with a box of wire so you don't have to worry about that. Um, inside the case it comes with a little pigtail here. Pigtail allows you to uh, put the cable out the back side of the box. Basically it will mount here on the back on inside the box, but it'll come on in through a hole in the back side of the box, and then it interfaces into the Arduino. It comes with a crash bar. I do have a little mock-up here that I built when I was working this out. So this is what the crash bar mechanism looks like. Um, so you'll get the, uh, the crash bar hardware here. And then on the back side, all of the pieces here, all of the mechanisms that make this work, I had to custom design those and 3D print those, so you get all of those parts as well um, that then allow you to actuate the uh, switch and actuate the uh, crash bar to do what you would expect it to do. So that's what uh, that's what all these pieces are. That again, here's the three pieces and all of the screws that go with mounting that to the face of this, as well as um, uh, mounting the handle to uh, to it. So we'll uh, take a look at that when we start putting things together. And then finally, you've got a big bag of switches. This is what we're here for, right? Switches. So you've got a variety of different switches and we'll, I'll just talk through kind of each different variation and then we'll just start building stuff because obviously you don't need me to go through each and every switch. So you've got uh, these two switches come with the package. They do light up, and they're for the master warning and master caution, as you you might guess if you fly the uh, TBM. So those uh, those will be part of the kit. There'll be two potentiometers here. Um, that one is to control the interior lighting of the cabin on the TBM. The other one will be used for the brake. Um, when you push the pedals and set the brake or release the brake, um, that will, will handle that. We've got a number of these little push button switches here. They're just momentary push button switches. Those get used for the uh, generator main and standby resets as well as the fuel shift button, which I don't think I've ever used when flying the airplane, but it's there. You're gonna have some toggles. You've got some small toggles that control all the lights, um, the lights and the uh, fuel uh, selector. You've got a bigger one that actually controls the ELT. And then the last three, there's three variations of these mini switches. Um, you've got the switch that is uh, a three-way momentary switch. So this is used for the uh, starter. And it's just a momentary, you push it up when you let go, it springs back. There's one of those. 
There are, I think, five of these. These are the same type of switch, but they're not momentary. They just um, they stay when where you put them. So those get used for things like the uh, the landing lights, the um, ignition, fuel pressure, AP trims. And then finally, you've got a number of these little uh, on-off switches. There's 10 of those in the kit. And those get used for the on on the on and off switches, like all of the uh, the icing panel, most of the ECS panel, and this is what actually drives the uh, the backside of the crash bar as well. It also comes with the USB cable that goes from the outside of the box to your computer. When you buy the kit, the only really thing that you probably need outside of the kit is again some glue to glue the box together and some nails of some sort, whether that's a nail gun or uh, manual nails and some paint to paint the case. Typically, the first thing you have to do is you come, uh, again, this is acrylic, so it's gonna come with the uh, backing still on it, so you have to peel the backing off. All right, so we get that off. Next thing is switches, right? So it's just a matter of putting the switches in. The two switches that are three-way switches, it doesn't really matter which you put them in because they're both do the same thing up and down. But the ECS switches, which I'm going to start with, there is a there is a uh, a direction that you want to put them because obviously when it's in the panel, you want the down position to be off. So there is a way to do that, and the way to do that is the two pins need to be on the bottom side of the panel. So if I try to get up here a little bit closer, I don't know if that camera is going to focus or not. You see that there are two pins that are on one side of the switch. Those go in the down position. Okay. Maybe that's better in the little little window. But yeah, this switch has two little uh, two little um, leads on the back. So when we put those in the panel, you'll also notice the switches will come with some extra stuff. I took off the uh, the outer the outer nut and the two washers. I don't use the washers, and I leave the inner nut on, which gives it just a little bit of recess. It recesses the switch. So you know, as you might expect, it's pretty pretty simple. You slide it through the hole. Again, with the uh, pin side to the bottom, and then you just screw it on. This is where the nut driver comes in handy because you can hand tighten it, and then you've got your uh, 5 16th mm -hmm. nut driver. It just slides right over top, and you can tighten it down. I will warn you about, again, because it is acrylic, you do want to be a little bit careful because it can crack and it can break. So you got to be just a little bit careful you're not tightening stuff down too much. And you don't drop it and you don't uh, bend it because it will break in half. All of the icing switches and the inertial separator, they're all up-down switches. So that's what we put there. And then it's just, you know, it's a pretty simple thing to realize that if I have a three-way off taxi landing that I need to put one of those three-way switches in there uh, along with the, uh, the ignition auto off and on, the uh, auxiliary uh, pressure here off on and auto, and then I'll put one in for the AP trims. And then, of course, when you get to the starter, abort on and off, 
you got to put the momentary one in there. So. All right, so I'm going to put the uh, push button switches in, and again, these momentary. There's three places for that. There's the uh, in the generator reset section. There's uh, a main and a standby that uh, take these momentary switches. These have only two pins. It doesn't really matter the orientation. Um, I typically like to do them horizontal on this one because it makes it easier to get in there with the wire later on. This one you have to use a little bit different uh, nut driver or a pair of pliers to tighten it down. The little switches should have the uh, circle at the bottom, correct? So you want to put those in, snap them in, and again, if you're unsure, you can always get the ohmmeter out and find out when it's in a certain position, um, it's in the off position. You'll notice that this one as well has got a little bit of a cheat on it again because the two, the two uh, terminals, spade terminals are on the bottom of the switch, so that's the, uh, the off side. Oh, see what I did? So I just uh, did you get a little too aggressive? There? I got a little too aggressive, man. Well, that's unfortunate. Never had a break in that position before. All right, well, that's what happens when you get a little too aggressive. All right, so we're making some headway. We'll go along with the uh, big switches here. Again, I take off the extra washers and stuff, and I the inner nut I just screw down so it's somewhat tight. These go in the two big holes, as you might expect. It doesn't really matter the orientation. I just I typically try to make sure that they're both oriented in the same direction. You see, there's three, and the the one in the middle is on one side of the switch. So I'll just make sure that it's that they're both oriented similar. So and then we have left the uh, two potentiometers. There's a little nub on the, the uh, potentiometer. I don't know if you can, I don't know which one you can see that on. There's a little nub on the side of that. You got to actually break that off. And if you just take a pair of pliers, that just snaps right off. Otherwise, it won't sit flux, flush to the panel. Um, I typically mount it in the panel with the spades down. And in the uh, wiring diagram that we'll look at in a little bit, it also has a picture of that and explains which, which terminal is for what. 
So now I've got to find my nut for that. The other thing you can do when you're assembling these things is you don't necessarily always have to tighten them with a pair of pliers. Sometimes if you just take the nut and hold it and then kind of turn the switch, you know, that's enough to tighten it up. I'd like to put just a little bit of a turn on it. Again, you don't want to get too aggressive on it. Put your uh, put your knob on there so you've got that going. This is the brand new one. The brand new one I probably put with the terminals actually going up on this one just because I don't want to have to try and work. I don't have to worry about that uh, the terminals and the wires getting in the way of the case. So if you look back here, now that we've pretty much got everything in, you know, you're going to kind of, what, what, what ultimately we do is we try to run like a pathway of wires, collapse them down. Let's see if I get over here. Collapse them down toward in the center and we run them toward the center. So things like this, I like to keep the terminals down so that you can run the wire across and this one same way toward the center of the, of the panel. Yeah, we're getting there. We'll put the uh, master warning and cautions in. Again, it doesn't really matter the orientation. I would just keep them the same so that you're not trying to figure out the pin mappings for this. And I need to do that as well. Pin mapping for master caution warning. Okay. So when I put them in there, I just want to make sure that the pins kind of are on the same side. Just uh, it makes it easier for when you're wiring stuff up. So this one. I'll... And then on the front side, you just want to make sure that when you tighten them down, there is a little bit of play in these switches, which is probably why those snapped it in the first place. I probably need a little bit more play in those square switches, but you just want to make sure that they're aligned so that they're you know straight across. And then the last thing we've got, we've got one switch left that actually goes in part of the assembly. Uh, but, minus the broken part here, <laughs> I put that back on here. And that's pretty much what the uh, front side of your panel will look like once you get all of the uh, switches in place. Okay, so let's work on the crash bar for a minute or two. Get that going. So you see, you'll, get, you'll end up with a nice little pile of washers and stuff that you can, you know, those are free of charge. You can use those for what you'd like to in, the, <laughs> in your own time. This is really two parts, right? Or three, uh, four parts, sorry. You've got the handle here, and that just goes through the hole in the front. And the best way to do that is to make sure that these, uh, these switches are all the way down. Um, the... Uh, the source and the generator switches are all the way down and then I just put the crash bar through the two holes and just kind of lay it on top of the switches. It's, it's meant to sit uh, horizontal when the switches are down. And then if you set it on the table it'll kind of keep it from getting away although you'll probably have to try to hold it a little bit. The three uh, 3D p printed pieces, one of them, um, this piece here, this holds the switch and this is what allows you to uh, actuate the toggle bar. Okay, so this little piece here, this plastic piece, um, it's got, if you look at it, it's got kind of an angle to it. So it, it's straight across here where the mounting, uh, mounting nubs are, and then it kind of jogs back. The back side of that is where the switch goes into. So, so this one you want to take the nut off because it needs to be able to stick through the uh, piece of plastic. And this is the last on-off switch. So this one, um, you want the switch, the off position to be um, up. So we want to make sure that the two little tabs, if you can see that, the two little tabs are on the top side. And then we'll put the nut on the front here. Okay, so that's how that kind of looks like. And then that can actually go, it goes on this side here, goes on 
when you're looking at the the panel there's only one place that's got the holes that fit so that goes over there and it actually fits very close to the switch that's there for the starter there are uh, four black screws two for each one of these brackets that just come through the front and then there's a little uh, nut that goes on the back side of that So it's a good idea to just get them started. <clears throat> I do realize that this second nut is a little bit hard to uh, get on there because of the position it's in. So a pair of needle nosed pliers might be of uh, a help with this one. So once you get that nut on there, I just, uh, you know, again, you can just tighten it down. It doesn't have to be particularly tight. You don't want to break that plastic, but just use your uh, screwdriver and tighten that down. So that's what it'll kind of look like on that side. You can see that in the stream. <clears throat> and then the other piece that goes in is this uh, kind of a corner piece. So you'll notice that there's a hole in uh, in this piece here, and that's because that's where these uh, these swivels will go. So this is what gives the crash bar its swivel. It just kind of fits in that hole, and then there's a corresponding hole on this side here where this piece goes as well. And they might be a little bit tight. They'll loosen up a, a little bit over time. You don't want them to be too loose. Other stuff, otherwise, stuff just kind of flops around. Let's see here. We can mount that piece on there. So again, you want to mount the whole side toward um, toward where the crash bars are, so it faces the hole in the other piece. And it mounts the same way. There's just uh, two screws that come in from the front of the panel. Okay, so we've got those two pieces in there. And then we'll put our put our crash bar back through the hole. And then the last part is just to put the um, put the swivel in each side. Swivel that down. And there's two different size screws. There's a short screw and a longer machine screw. There's two different sizes here. The short screw goes in the triangle, triangle side. And I've got a little uh, lock washer for this one, just because I don't want them to loosen up. So we'll put the lock washer on there. And then that just screws down into the handle. it quite yet and then on the other side on this side you've got this extra uh, this arm and this arm is what actuates the switch itself and so what we do is we take the longer machine screw with the washer the lock washer on it that goes through the top of this this here and then um, that whole assembly sits on top of the the metal part so when you're done it looks something like this you can see that on the uh, stream I'll try over here too it'll look something like that with the uh, the metal part on the bottom the plastic part on the top and then the screw goes through both of those and then when you assemble this you have to again you have to slide the uh, pin in the hole so the pin goes in the hole here and then there's a hole in the arm that that switch has to go through. The switch switch arm has to go through. So you kind of slide those on there until they're in there. And then screw on the uh, second arm of the crash bar.
Okay, and so that's what you've got now. So now you've got a crash bar that is actually recessed a little bit because there were some early, uh, early users that had a problem with the switches not sticking out far enough. But you've got the crash bar, so when you rotate that crash bar up, it actuates this switch back here, which is going to uh, turn on the battery uh, for the airplane. And then, of course, you can move your uh, master and generator switches up into their respective positions. And, of course, when you're done and you're ready to shut down the airplane, crash bar comes down and all the switches go off. Now there are six screws that are also part of the kit that come with it. Those are the screws that actually mount the panel to the wooden box when you're done. So you might want to put those elsewhere until you're done with the box portion. So the kit comes with these uh, nice five color wires. But let's start by looking at the guide quick. So if you take apart my little package that I sent as part of the package. And throw the business card away because you surely won't need to call me afterwards. So the meat, the meat of the uh, project is right here. This kit with all of the switches wired uses 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, uh, minus a few. It uses about 48 of the Arduino pins. So. It's pretty important that you get all of the switches mapped to the right pins because if you don't, then the config file that I send as part of the kit won't map properly. Now, if you do that, it's not the end of the world. I'd be happy to work with you on trying to figure out what the right pinouts are. It's just kind of a pain. So what I've included here is this handy dandy little guide that shows every pin on the Arduino board what switch and position that it maps to along with the description of that switch and then I've used I use a nice wiring color guide that uh, alternates the same colors over and over and over because it's just easier to get into a pattern now the pin numbers on the shield if you look at the back side of the shield and we'll try this camera over here because it looks to be doing a better job now if I get up there if you guys can see that or not but there are numbers on the back side of the shield. We'll try it up here as well. And so those numbers correspond to the, the pin on the other side, which corresponds to the, the pin out on the actual Arduino board. So the process of wiring this board, and, and maybe I'll start on that, is, is quite literally taking a piece of the right wire. And so we'll talk about that. The first one is pin D2. We're going to use a red wire, and when it gets to wiring the switches, that's going to go in the down position. It's going to power the down position of switch one, which happens to be the landing light. So when we did that, we would just take a piece of red wire. We would find what's two. It's not labeled D2, but it's just two here. And we would stick the wire through there and solder it up. So you only get to do that 48 times, 50 times, maybe 52 times. You know. So that'll take a little bit of time to build this. And, and the way I typically do it is I, I build this shield first. I get all of the wires on the shield. And so when you're done, you'll end up with a shield with a, with a bundle of wires coming out of it. And then I actually take the time to kind of figure out and remember which wires are going where. So this, this shield will sit on the back side of the panel, something like this, when it's all said and done. It's not mounted. It's really just kind of held in place by the wires. But you'll see half of the wires want to go this way. We want them to go to the left. Half the wires will go this way, and the other half will go that way. So I'll take the time to try to groom those. It'll actually sit like this. Take the time to kind of groom those wires so that they come out this side and they come out this side. Um, and probably what I'll do is when I build one of these, I'll take some additional pictures that kind of show that. But I like to have a nice little bundle of wires coming out in each direction. Um, tidy them up with some zip ties and stuff like that. The way the Arduino works is it's it's literally 
you're shorting a pin. So you've got a ground plane that everything is grounded to, and then each one of the pins has some voltage on it. And when you short that voltage to ground, the Arduino interprets that as that switch or that pin has closed, right? So when you translate that to a switch, what that means, and we'll use the icing panel as an example, all of the icing panels are on and off, right? So when they're off, these pins are open, meaning they're not, they're not touching, they're not closed, they're open. And so when we flip the switch, what happens is those pins close, and now what you've got is one pin is the, is the ground side, the other side goes to the actual pin on the Arduino. When you flip the switch, it closes that circuit and tells the Arduino board that that pin has been flipped, or that switch has been flipped, and then the software in the Arduino then translate that into a command over to the simulator that tells the simulator that that switch has been switched. And then the command, the, the mapping file, that's part of the ArdSimX plugin, then maps that action into something happening in the airplane. So again, if you want to take this all the way through, all of these switches are common ground. When you flip the switch, in this case, this first one, when you flip it up, that closes that circuit to the second pin and causes the Arduino to say, oh, pin number, whatever that is, 48 has just closed. The software in the Arduino then sends a software signal to the X-Plane plugin that says pin number 47 has just flipped. A uh, configuration file within X-Plane in the ArdSimX plugin says, oh, okay, great. I just got a signal that 47 has flipped. What do you want me to do with that signal? And that's when you would say, oh, well, in X-Plane, I want you to toggle the airframe de-ice. So that's kind of how that works all the way through from an electrical physical perspective as well as a software perspective. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to do a ground, right? All of the switches, you're going to take one of the pins and you're going to bond them all together on the same ground wire. So for the single throw switches, the up-down switches, I typically just choose the middle one. In fact, all the switches, I choose the middle one. And I just run a wire that starts here and literally weaves its way through all of the middle terminals on that switch and then I'll jump up here and I'll do the same up here I'm just kind of weaving it through right and then I'll do the same over here and ultimately they all have to come together so the the place that I like to make them come together is on one of these large switches because it actually has um, screw terminals so it's just a lot easier to deal with multiple wires coming in there. But I just kind of basically strip off. You see what I'm doing here? Just take little chunks and just be careful with it. You can strip off the, the insulation, hopefully without breaking the wire. Once you break the insulation, then usually that just comes off pretty easily. Until you end up with a piece that's a bare piece of wire about a foot, foot and a half long. Do a little bit further. Okay. So you end up with a piece of bare wire that you guys can probably barely see, if at all, in uh, in the camera. And then that's what I use to then, you know, I'll start at one one side, and again, you just weave it through. In this case, the middle terminal. You got to be a little bit careful because the wire can break if you're not not careful with it. So you know you fish it through there, then you come to the next one. Don't forget to uh, leave a little bit of a loop here for the for the uh, potentiometer. The one that you want to use is the one that is from the bottom. I have this handy dandy little guide here, so if you turn this upside down, it's the one over here. So I just usually kind of wrap a little loop around that pin just so it's there and connected. Again, my stubby little fingers. All right. So you're going to end up with something that looks similar to that, if you guys can see that. Well, you've got that common ground that's just looped through one pin on each one of those switches.
the center pin is a good one to choose. Now once you've done that and you've done that on all of them, then that's when I start soldering, right? So I'll just come out and I'll just solder each one of those down, make sure that they're all, you know, connected well. And again, it's a bit of a fine art when you're doing soldering to make sure that you don't melt the switch itself. Um, you know, the key is to get a good bond between the wire and the and the pin on the switch, but not get that pin so hot that it melts the switch. So again, this isn't a class on soldering, and I'm certainly not the one to teach it if it was. Uh, but do be a little bit careful when you're soldering those switches because it can, uh, it, it's pretty easy to melt them. Even all of the switches, doesn't matter which, which one it is. So you'll end up doing that with a ground wire, and then once you're done, you'll have a ground wire that's touching every one of these switches and terminating, again, I try to use these big switches here, and just terminating on one or both of these big switches. And then ultimately when we hook the Arduino up, you'll have one ground wires that come out of the Arduino. One will go to that common uh, switch here. Now once you've done that, that's usually a good time to test to make sure that stuff is kind of working. Um, and, and the way I'll do that is, again, I'll pull out the handy dandy ohmmeter. What you can do once this is all set is just take the, the end of the wire, the ground wire, and you just have to go down the line on each switch touch the other terminal and then flip the switch. Right? And so you do that on all of the switches and you want to make sure one when the switch is off that you're not getting a tone, you don't have any continuity. And when the switch is on, you get uh, you get your tone, you get your continuity all the way across. So that tests two things. That tests one that your switches are all working. And two, make sure that you've got continuity across that whole ground bus. So if I get to the last switch and I flip it, you can hear that it's uh, setting it off. So I know that my ground wire continuity is good all the way across all of the switches because I've tested each one. So now, once you've done all of that and you've got your common ground bus established, then the next step is using your, your bundle of wires coming out of your, your uh, Arduino uh, shield and then it's really about going back to your guide again you know d2 it's going to be a red wire and typically it's a good idea when you're soldering up these to label them i found otherwise you have to go back and tone them all out to make to try to figure out which wire is which but you'll find your d2 wire coming off of your board and you're going to go to the switch number one into the down position which happens to be your um, switch for the uh, landing lights so the down position is actually, we're upside down, so it's going to be this one at the very left-hand side. And when you put the switch down, it's a little bit of a, you have to think a little bit in reverse. When you put the switch down, it's actually the top pin that is, um, that's active. So it's kind of reverse of what you might expect. And so when I put the switch down, that D2 is actually going to be this top switch, top pin on the first switch. So you would take your D2 wire, you would run it there, you'd connect it, and you'd solder it. Again, 47 more times, just like you did with the shield. And when you're done, you're going to end up with something, again, that's going to look very similar to having um, the backside of this board. Okay, so that picture is kind of what it looks like uh, on the backside when it's done. You'll see you kind of have a little bit of a bundle of wires that's coming out of each of those switches. I tend to try to wire those all together and get them into a nice little bundle. But when you're done, that shield just kind of sits and all of those wires coming in there, there's enough mass in all of those wires that it holds that it holds that Arduino board uh, pretty secure. And then it, you just kind of slide it into the case when you're, when you're done.